Imagine a world where 30,000 babies are born each year, not from their mother's wombs, but from artificial ones. In today's episode, we'll dive into the fascinating and controversial world of Ectolife, a company that claims to have revolutionized human reproduction. Join us as we explore the technology behind artificial wombs, the ethical concerns they raise, and the impact they could have on future generations. In 1954, Emmanuel M. Greenberg filed a patent for a mystifying invention, one that featured two captivating images, depicting what would later be known as the artificial womb. For years, Greenberg had been fascinated with creating a machine that could allow a fetus to develop outside of a mother's body. In the United States, one in ten babies are born prematurely, and premature babies often have health problems that can even lead to death. This number goes way up if we include the health issues of parents, and now this technology can quite literally change the world. In 2017, an extraordinary breakthrough took place at the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. A group of dedicated researchers successfully sustained the life of a lamb fetus which was not yet capable of independent survival for an incredible four weeks. The most amazing part, they achieved this by creating an artificial amniotic sac that mimicked the natural womb environment, allowing the developing lamb to receive vital nutrients and growth factors through its beating heart. Watching the little creature transform from a pink, alien-looking blob into a breathing, swallowing mammal was nothing short of a miraculous sight. And just when you thought things couldn't get any peculiar, a team of ingenious researchers from Australia and Japan came along in March 2019 to demonstrate their ability to keep a premature lamb alive outside the womb for five days. But unfortunately, human trials were still a far-fetched idea, because for developing a human fetus, we need to create synthetic amniotic fluid which is extremely important for delivering food and nourishing the baby. And Ectolife has found a way to successfully make this happen. Ectolife's cutting-edge ectogenesis pods are equipped with multiple sensors to monitor water, oxygen levels and muscle mass in the fetus, as well as ECG to ensure a regular heart rate. But before all of these safety systems, Ectolife pod receives the parent's genetic information, and a highly advanced AI scans for congenital defects such as diabetes or cancer. The AI then utilizes an algorithm to combine the male and female DNA, creating a unique genetic profile for the fetus. But Ectolife still has significant obstacles to overcome. While it may appear to be a concept borrowed from the Matrix, Ectolife's artificial womb technology is in fact a genuine breakthrough, with the potential to transform our approach to reproduction. Utilizing synthetic amniotic fluid and state-of-the-art monitoring systems, fetuses are nurtured and developed in bioreactors powered by renewable energy sources. Apart from all the safety measures, one might wonder how will these babies recognize their biological parents if they were not even born anywhere close to them. After all, every parent wants their child to be as close to them as possible, and for this, Ectolife Pods can allow you to connect with your baby through a wireless network. Using the pod's inbuilt surround sound system, you can communicate with your baby, sharing your voice, favorite music, or stories around the clock. With a 360-degree camera system streaming live to your smartphone, you can also connect to a VR headset. Many Ectolife customers adore the ability to watch a time-lapse of their baby's development. The pods foster a strong connection with your baby. And using a wireless haptic suit synced to the growth pod, you can even feel your baby's kicks and share the experience with loved ones. But for Ectolife's elite customers, there's an even more intriguing advantage. Imagine future humans evolving into X-Men. Take it easy. Calm I can't down. do this. I promise you. Yeah. You're fine. Warren, relax. What secrets lie within Ectolife's elite membership? Well, Neo might have an answer here. In the Matrix movies, human beings were kept in these artificial wombs to serve as an energy source for the machines. While Ecto's life's use of artificial wombs is focused on improving human reproduction and addressing population decline, the concept of using them as a means of control in a dystopian society, as depicted in The Matrix, raises important ethical questions about the use of technology in our lives. Given the advancements in artificial womb technology and its potential to reduce pregnancy-related complications and population decline, what ethical considerations need to be taken into account before mass production of this technology? In addition, how can we ensure that artificial wombs are not abused for unethical purposes, such as creating a race of genetically superior individuals? But first, let's step back and take a look at real-world stats on why we really need it. In 2021, 
National Medical Sciences disclosed a distressing report indicating 384,000 preterm births in the United States alone, while more than 15 million babies are born prematurely worldwide each year. Preterm infants often struggle with breathing difficulties, heart defects, immune deficiencies and other health complications, which explains why they account for 17% of all infant deaths. Moreover, those who survive childhood frequently face chronic health challenges, such as visual and hearing impairments, including behavioral disorders. In its 2022 report card, March of Dimes, a leading organization in maternal and infant health, revealed that the U.S. preterm birth rate had risen to 10.5% over the last decade. Now imagine the possibilities if a premature infant could be placed inside an artificial womb instead of relying on an incubator or struggling to survive independently. But where do surrogacy and adoption fit into this picture? The adoption and surrogacy process can be incredibly complicated, expensive and time-consuming. Surrogacy can cost anywhere between $75,000 to $125,000, with most of the costs dependent on the surrogate's medical expenses during pregnancy. Additionally, the process typically takes one to two years to finalize, as potential surrogates must undergo screening. Although adoption is generally less costly than surrogacy, it is no less intricate, leaving parents uncertain whether the birth mother will ultimately relinquish her child for adoption. Such costs and complications deter many prospective parents from pursuing family expansion through adoption. However, with Hashem Al-Ghaili's revolutionary ectolife, these problems could become relics of the past. The faculty has more than 300-plus gene depositories saved in their DNA banks for any fetal genetic disorder. By employing the CRISPR technique, they can precisely cut and edit the DNA strand. Crafting a more efficient genetic makeup for the offspring, you also have the ability to select and modify specific genes for your child such as hair color, physical strength, intelligence, and other attributes. The AI integrated within the pods ensures the resulting genome remains closely aligned with both parents' genetic profiles. And with this, the fetus is finally placed inside the pod. But it doesn't end there. Regardless of biological advances, there are certain problems with this technology which might turn our world into a real-life movie. With ectolife, superhuman strength, Heightened senses and immunity to disease are just a few possibilities. As the world gazes upon ectolife with astonishment, a sinister shadow begins to emerge on the horizon. What if these genetically enhanced children grew up to be more than just extraordinary? What if they develop capabilities that surpass the boundaries of human potential? Could ectolife inadvertently give rise to a new breed of X-Men-like superhumans who are both feared and challenged by society simply because they exist? Sooner or later, we will meet the twins. This may sound like the premise of a science fiction story, but it's a genuine concern shared by scientists and experts. Pediatricians and child psychologists warn of the dire consequences of mass producing these enhanced babies, predicting a future where discrimination is rampant. While we've come a long way in the field of genetics, we still don't fully understand the implications of tampering with DNA. One small edit could mean the difference between life and death and we don't know what kind of genetic anomalies could rise from creating a completely new DNA sequence. Think about the killer bees, for example. They were created in the 1950s in Brazil by a biologist named Warwick E. Kerr, who was trying to develop a bee species better suited to the tropical climate for increased honey production. However, some of these bees escaped containment and began breeding with local populations, leading to the spread of Africanized honeybees throughout the Americas. These bees are more aggressive than their European counterparts and have been known to attack humans and animals, sometimes causing fatalities. It's not hard to see why there's so much anxiety surrounding ectolife and its cutting-edge technology. Of course, there's always a bright side. If we look at this technology through an optimistic lens, we could potentially solve the problem of population decline. But the question remains, at what cost? Ectolife claims to be neutral to any radical ideology, but what if they change their tune? Would these superhumans be viewed as a threat, or would they be celebrated as the next step in human evolution? This is the Vanisher. But... Vanisher! <laughs> nice! Right? Be sure to drop your thought in the comments down below.